Hi everybody, welcome to this video in cardiology. So this again is another just like brain dump of all of the information that is important to know for, or some of the information that is important to know in terms of cardiology for step 2 CK. So let's get started. Uh, first point is that patients with CHF often have preferential of the efferent, efferent um, renal arterioles. So remember that efferent arterioles, um, they have preferential vasoconstriction of the efferent arterioles. So when you think about that, then just use that information to help you remember that usually patients with CHF are in edematous states. So I want you to remember edematous E, efferent E, and then that should help you to remember that point. Major Duke criteria, I won't go through minor Duke criteria because I don't think it's as important. So Major Duke criteria, there are two. They have to be blood culture positive. So that's like S. viridans, S. aureus, or enterococcus, for example. And they have to have to sustain bacteria, bacteremia by an organism known to cause endocarditis. The next one is echocardiogram showing valvular vegetation. So endocardial involvement documented by echo or new, new valvular regurgitation. So a new murmur. They should have a new murmur at least. And then in terms of complications, there are four different areas of complications. There's cardiac complications, neuro complications, renal complications, and MSK complications. So in terms of cardiac complications, this would be valvular insufficiency, perivalvular abscess. Remember, if they have like a new onset um, AV block, then you want to be thinking about perivalvular abscess. They can actually have actually have conduction abnormalities as well or a mycotic aneurysm. The next are neuro complications. So they can have an embolic stroke, a cerebral hemorrhage, brain abscess, or acute encephalopathy. So that's embolic stroke, cerebral hemorrhage, brain abscess, or acute encephalopathy. Renal complications include renal infarction, glomerular nephritis, or drug-induced interstitial, acute interstitial nephritis. So remember with AIN, they get sterile pyuria, and you see eosin, eosinophil, sorry, eosinophils in the urine. MSK complications can include vertebral osteomyelitis, septic arthritis, or MSK abscess. So as you can see, um, infective endocarditis can cause many, many complications, and you want to be aware of those so that when you're reading the question stem, you're able to pick out those complications and determine the diagnosis. So what is the recommended therapy for patients greater than 75 that have clinically significant atherosclerotic disease? You want to start them on a moderate intensity statin. If they were less than 75, then you would start them on a high intensity statin. A 60-year-old male with dyspnea, diminished carotid pulse, and second heart sound, soft second heart sound, that would be aortic stenosis, high-yield aortic stenosis. Diminished carotid pulse, soft second heart, heart sound, that's aortic stenosis. A patient presents with um, severe chest pain that radiates to the back between the scapula. Physical exam reveals BP in 169 in the left arm and 120 in the right arm. What is the best initial test? So this isn't asking for the best test. It's asking for the best, like most accurate test. It's asking for the best initial test. And so this person has aortic dissection. So that would be a chest x-ray to look for mediastinal widening. Patient with long-standing syphilis with diastolic murmur in the right intercostal space. That would be a thoracic aortic aneurysm. And it the the next step in management for this would actually be, so once you've already seen it on chest x-ray, you want to do a CT scan of the chest to evaluate how, how big the aneurysm is. So the aneurysm is usually secondary to aortic valve insufficiency due to dilation of the aortic valve and valve ring. Cold water immersion relieves symptoms of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia by decreasing AV node conductivity. So when you're doing those like vagal maneuvers, the reason why they work is because they decrease the AV node conductivity. PSVT is most commonly due to an AV node reentry circuit. So vagal maneuvers increase the parasympathetic tone, which is going to slow down AV node conductivity. And then vagal maneuvers include Valsalva, carotid sinus massage, and diving. So cold water immersion reflex. Next, what is the likely diagnosis in a young patient with abrupt onset tachycardia and palpitations? That would be paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. So new onset uh, or abrupt onset tachycardia and palpitations in a young patient, you want to think about SVTs. What is the recommended diagnostic test for a patient with chest pain that have high risk for CAD? You want to take them to the angio, so coronary angiography. 
Which cardiovascular abnormalities are associated with more fans? That would be mitral valve prolapse. So you'll hear a mid-systolic click followed by a late, uh, late, late systolic murmur. Aortic disease, aortic regurgitation secondary to aortic root dilation, aortic dissection slash aneurysm and aneurysm. A patient presents complaining of severe chest pain that radiates to the back in between his scapula. Physical examination reveals a BP of 169 over 108 in the left arm, 120 over 70 in the right arm. What is the most accurate test? And that would be CT angiogram. Remember, again, this person then has uh, aortic dissection. What is the most likely diagnosis on a patient on post-MI day 5 that presents a sudden onset cardiogenic shock in a harsh um, hollow systolic murmur at the left sternal border. Um, I have a video on these MI complications, but in this case, it would be interventricular septal rupture. Uh, propanolol is a beta blocker that may exacerbate vasospasm in vasospastic prinzmetal angina, so just be careful with giving beta blockers in patients with um, vasospastic angina. What class of antiarrhythmic is characterized by prolonged QRS at durations at faster heart rates? That would be class 1 antiarrhythmics. What abnormal RBCs may be seen in patients with scleroderma of renal crisis? That would be schistocytes due to microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, malignant hypertension, vessel damage, shearing of platelets, that would lead to maha and schistocytes. Class 4 antiarrhythmics, non dihydropyridine CCBs, decreased conduction velocity through the AV node. The murmur of pulmonic stenosis is characterized by an ejection click followed by a decrescendo, decrescendo, decrescendo systolic murmur over the left second intercostal space. Murmur is going to increase with inspiration because it's a right-sided murmur. There's a widened split of S2. Dobutamine improves symptoms of decompensated heart failure by increasing myocardial contractility. What is the most likely diagnosis in a patient with recent uveitis, complete AV heart block, bilateral midfield lung opacities on chest x-ray? That would be cardiac sarcoidosis, secondary to non-caseating granulomas in the myocardium. What is the likely diagnosis in a hemodynamically unstable patient that presents following a motor vehicle accident with an elevated uh, PCWP that worsens after administration of IV fluids? That would be myocardial contusion because the blood isn't able to pump out properly. What is the most common cause of mitral regurgitation in developed countries? So that would be um, mitral valve prolapse. And sorry, the text gets smaller here, so this will take a little bit longer. Flank pain with superinguinal tenderness in patients who have had recent cardiac catheterization. What is the diagnosis? That would be retroperitoneal hemorrhage that you'll see on CT scan. What is the recommended diagnostic test for patients with chest pain that have had intermittent risk for CAD? That's exercise stress test. Factors that reduce oxygen supply to myocardium are coronary atherosclerosis and sequelae, vasospasms, and increased heart rate, as well as anemia. Factors that increase oxygen demand, such as exercise and chronic hypertension, are in, lead to an increase, or sorry, are increase and increased afterload. What pharmacological treatment should be avoided in patients with an MI that presents with CHF, heart block, and bradycardia? That would be beta blockers. You don't want to give beta blockers in that case because it will cause them to bottom out if they have like hypotension, bradycardia, heart block, or CHF. Atypical symptoms associated with MI are more common in women, the elderly, and diabetics. AV nodal reentrant tachycardia is contained two pathways, one fast and one slow within the AV node, causing a continuous circuit that conducts impulses to the ventricles, producing tachycardias. AV reentrant tachycardia, AVRT, is caused by an accessory pathway between the atrium and the ventricle. Proxismal ventricular, um, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, such as AVNRT and AVRT, can be treated in a hemodynamically stable patient with vagal maneuvers such as Valsalva, carotid massage, or diving reflex, cold water, or cold head immersion. These work by increasing parasympathetic tone, leading to a slowing of conduction and increase in refractory period in the AV node, leading to termination. 58-year-old female with systemic sclerosis complaining of a headache, dyspnea, and nausea. Um, and vitals include a BP of 235 over 117 and a heart rate of 120. Labs show anemia, thrombocytopenia, and elevated creatinine. Uh, so that would be scleroderma renal crisis, which is a sudden onset renal failure, malignant hypertension, and PBS will show, or peripheral blood smear will show maha or DIC with schistocytes and thrombocytopenia. 
um, patients with hypertension and pulmonary hypertension, secondary to left-sided ventricular dysfunction, undergoes treatment with um, diuretics and ACE inhibitor. This patient is at, over, at risk of overdiuresis, which can lead to complications such as pre-renal failure. Uh, mitral valve prolapse is present in about half of patients with fragile X syndrome. What is the likely diagnosis in a patient undergoing femoral artery embolectomy who develops pain and numbness in her leg with weak pulses two hours after surgery? The leg is sorry. The leg is swollen, stiff, and tender on palpating, and dorsiflexion of the foot causes pain. That's compartment syndrome secondary to reperfusion injury. Mitral valve regurgitation is a complication of untreated group A strep infections such as scarlet fever and tonsillopharyngitis. What are the ulcers commonly seen at the tip of the toes? Those would be arterial ulcers seen in vasculopaths. What adrenic uh, receptor is the primary target of dopamine? Beta-1 receptor agonist. Uh, which of the next best step in management? What, what is the best next step in a patient with narrow complex tachycardia was hemodynamically unstable. You want to do synchronized cardioversion. Cardiac amyloidosis is a form of restrictive cardiomyopathy with preserved ejection fraction. Other manifestations of amyloidosis include proteinuria, high yield, proteinuria, nephrotic syndrome slash nephropathy, waxy skin, anemia, and an enlarged tongue. Proxismal supraventricular tachycardia is most often caused by reentry and leads to narrow QRS complexes with absent P waves on EKG. What is the mixed venous oxygen indicator? It's for tissue hypoxia. It indicates um, degree of extraction of O2 from blood delivered to tissue. And when will it be elevated? It will be elevated in septic shock. So septic shock has an infectious organism and or origin and bacteria PAMPs mess up the ETC, thus decreasing aerobic metabolism and ability for tissues to extract oxygen. So there's more oxygen in the venous system. What is the... Ejection fraction in a patient with heart failure secondary to myocarditis that would be reduced or dilated cardiomyopathy produces systolic heart failure. Features of severe aortic stenosis include a late peaking systolic murmur and soft second heart sound like we talked about earlier. Uh, what is the preferred initial diagnostic test for fibromuscular dysplasia? That would be non-invasive imaging, so CT, angio, and duplex ultrasound. I hope that helps you in your studies. Best of luck. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you. Have a great day.